Hello friends, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I am Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm talking about the new HDR merge feature, but but I am not, no, I am not gonna build a multi-exposure blended HDR image with the HDR merge function. We are not gonna do that. What we're talking about today is single exposures and dropping them in to the HDR merge window and seeing what you get. I've discovered two things that I'm gonna share with you. The first one is, of course, the obvious thing, which is, hey, you can really make your photo pop. Here's an example of that. Here is an image, a single exposure, shot in Iceland on the Luminar Photo Camp two years ago. We're going back this fall. If you haven't yet signed up or are interested, there is a link down below to get more information. But that's my single exposure, and I dropped it into HDR Merge, and I got that. I didn't do anything. I just moved the photo over, dragged it, dropped it, and boom, that's my result. If you look at that, there's a lot more intensity there which I like because I've been having people say, hey, I don't shoot brackets. Would this work? Should this be something I do with single exposures? To which I reply, no brackets, no problem. You can absolutely use it for single exposures. And as you can see, you can get really interesting results. In particular, I'm looking at the ice right around these edges where there's a little bit of the sunrise glow there and a little bit of interesting ice there. Remember, that was my base exposure, not as prominent. Now you can see some of these different areas in the ice are really starting to pop. And of course, me being who I am, I turned it into that. Now I know it's just, it's kind of colorful, but shh, a little secret. I kind of like color. Uh, you know that if you've been here, but bottom line, base photo, HDR merge turned it into something with a bit more intensity, which I like. And of course I turned it into something that I really like. That's the second thing we're gonna talk about. I wanna go into the first thing right now, and that is, I've got this photo here, and uh, it's a 0.0, .0 EV, exposure value zero, right? It's totally flat. If you go into the edit menu, this is not HDR yet, you can see it's a raw file, it's fully unedited, but if I hit the J key, which, J key, by hitting that, it activates the visibility of kind of what the blown out parts are and what the really dark parts are. If it's completely blown out, it's in red, right? And if it's completely blue, like down here, that means it's basically totally black. What I would normally do is a photo like this, I would go into develop raw, and I would say, you know what I need to do is I need to pull down the highlights, obviously, and you can get that uh, highlights under control by doing so. But what I wanted to point out is the base exposure looks like that. You can recover it, or at least most of it, many times with Develop Raw. But what I wanna show you is comparing that, remember how much red there was, I'm gonna hit revert to original, although I will tell you, dragging, even if you've edited this photo, if you drag it to HDR Merge, it's the original photo that's getting hit uh, with HDR, uh, or the tone mapping, really. It's not taking that adjustment and then building it from there. So just FYI. But I've got this raw file. I'm gonna take that into HDR Merge. It's not really a merge because it's one single exposure. It's applying the tone mapping, which was from Aurora HDR, and it's applying that to this photo. But now, take a look at this photo. I'm gonna hit the J key, and look at that. There's no red. My exposure is balanced, and my exposure is also crooked. There are spots in the sky and things like that. So. We're all friends here, don't hold that against me. I've done nothing to the photo. As you saw, it was a base raw file. I apparently needed to see a chiropractor before I went out and shot these photos in Copenhagen years ago. But anyway, you can still see there's still a bit of shadow to recover. Once again, you can go into develop. Keep in mind, if you do this, you're working with a TIFF file and not a raw file. Here's the thing. This is something you'll have to decide and maybe experiment with, but I wanted to point out that I'm getting beautiful and incredible, I think, highlight recovery by dropping these raw files into HDR Merge on single exposures. It, that tone mapping is really helping. But as I said, I'm now working off a TIFF file. Now I will tell you the first thing I do with an exposure like this when it's a raw file is go try to control the highlights and adjust the shadows. And so I do that with the raw files. I like to work with that raw data. But then after I do some of that and some contrast, I'm kinda done. This HDR Merge might be an idea for you in order to help you recover those highlights. 
I want to show you that on one more photo. Here's another photo, raw file. It's a negative one exposure value. I'm going to go into edit first just to show you. Hit the J key and you will see that that sky is completely blown out. And there's some dark shadow and stuff. I like shadow in my photo. I generally try to pull back some of the overexposed parts. Depends on the image, not all the time, but there is a completely blown out sky, right? Turn off the J key. I've done nothing to the photo. I'm going to go back to the catalog. I've got that image here. I'm going to drop it in HDR merge, hit merge, and we're going to go take a look at it. Okay, so here is my HDR merge version of that photo. No other adjustments. Nothing's been done. Let me hit the J key. And there you go. Hey, there's no red in the sky. I've got a really well-balanced sky now. The highlight control that I'm finding with Luminar Neo's HDR merge function on single exposures is massive. I still have some shadows. Not a problem. I can go fix that. And in fact, in this photo, I would say the ability for that to pull back the highlights is so much, they actually look a little bit flat. So in this case, I would go back and add a little bit of highlights, and I would actually go add a little bit of whites. And you will notice when I get to a certain point, the red starts creeping back in. So I tend to pull it maybe right about to the edge. Maybe get a tiny bit of red like that, but not very much. Hit the J key to hide it. Little bit better look in the sky. So it pulled it back a lot. The point is single exposures work great in HDR Merge and Luminar Neo. So you do not have to have been firing brackets for the last 10 or 12 years like some people uh, in order to take advantage of this capability. It works incredibly well on single exposures. And in fact, here are a bunch of single exposures that I've done nothing to that started out as really kind of flat images and I turned them into something that looks a whole lot better thanks to the power of HDR Merge here in Luminar Neo. Now, I'm gonna go back to this one and I want to show you. I'm gonna just drag that into HDR Merge I'm going to go ahead and click Merge. It's going to give me the HDR tone mapped, if you will, the tone mapped version of this single exposure. Okay, so here we are. Remember, it creates an HDR Merge folder for you. You can see I got a lot of photos. I've deleted quite a few, but I'm dragging so many single exposures, and I've been building a lot of HDRs too. So here is my HDR that I just made by dropping the single exposure into the HDR Merge function in Neo. But here's my final image. Let me just walk through the edit and show you what I did because I got a lot out of this photo, and I really like the results. It's kind of colorful. Shh, I like color. I can't help it, but let me get down in here and show you what I did. Remember, you're now working with a TIFF file. I went into develop and I did two basic things, a little bit more balancing of the exposure and a little bit of temperature tint and some vibrance. Then I went into super contrast and look at that. I mean, super contrast. If you're not using it, I think you're missing out. I'm just, I'm a little biased here. It's an amazing tool, but that's before super contrast and that's with it. It's really giving me a little bit more pop. Now, Structure AI, what I did here is negative structure, and then I used Mask AI to go in and just create a mask automatically for the sky. I need to come back in with a brush and touch it up a little bit, but honestly, that was basically a couple of clicks, and I was able to smooth out the sky. After that, I went into toning. I love toning, also known as split toning. Went into the highlights and took them from there to there, which is giving a little bit more of that sunrise glow. But after that was landscape and specifically golden hour, which I just adore, but it hits the warmer tones and really gives them a nice pop. So there it is before and there it is after. I went into a vignette. Uh, or the vignette tool. I dropped the vignette center down here a little bit below where I wanted it to be. I added a little bit of inner light, completely round, completely feathered, and it just basically gives me a little bit of pop. There it is before and after. And honestly, I thought I was done. And then I went back to Accent AI and gave it just a little extra kick simply because I like to. And if you know from that video, at the end uh, of my edit, I like to come in with Accent AI, not in the beginning, at the end to give it a little extra kick. A 41 is probably a bit more than a little, but hey, there it is before, there it is after really bringing that ice to life. And it all started with some tone mapping. Remember, that was my tone map image. And if you go back here, that was my original. Kind of boring, kind of lifeless, cool, interesting photo in my opinion. I love the whole idea of the photo. Tone mapping really gave it some umph. You can see in these thinner parts of the uh, ice, I mean, where it's just kind of coming to life compared to the original. And then, of course, I turned it into that. 
which is right here in Neo. So we covered two things, my friends. And by the way, if you like this video, you'll probably really like what I did in that video. So check that one out next. But in this video, I wanted to cover the workflow for this photo and more specifically how I'm getting incredible highlight recovery using HDR Merge on a single exposure. So yes, you do not have to have been firing brackets like some folks for years and years and have all these backlogged of bracket photos in order to take advantage of the power of HDR Merge. Single exposure, it works great and it's really great at helping you control the light in your photos. That's it for this one, my friends. Thank you very much. I will see you next time. And until then, adios.